hallelujah praise the lord jesus i want to welcome you to this segment of seeking the mysteries of god and i will be your host alan one and i'll be taking you through the topic of today and blessed people today we are going to go and search the scripture a particular scripture and have a conversation about it also in the comment section as i begin discussing it if you have any understanding any for any form of points ensure that you post them there so that even we may get to understand we may get to share our views so remember to comment also in the comment section on your understanding of the topic which we are going to uh, discuss on this particular day to the glory of god the father and so today we are going to discuss two verses deuteronomy 6 4 and mark 12 29 and deuteronomy 6 4 says which will actually launch the instruction of the lord uh, to this particular day is this deuteronomy uh, 6 4 listen israel the lord our god is the only true god hallelujah are you aware that uh, you are God and the Lord God himself? He is one. And the version say, Listen, O house of Israel. Are you aware that the Lord thy God, he is one? Also, you're going to look at Mark chapter 12, verse 29. And the scripture does say, Jesus, uh, uh, Mark 12, 29, Jesus answered, the most important one says, People of Israel, you have only one Lord and God. And there is an instruction which the Lord wants to launch to instruct the church today because it's very important for us uh, as believers to grasp mature food, to eat of the flesh, so that we may get to understand the things of God even deeply. Hallelujah. And there is an instruction which is being launched today even as we discuss this theme of knowing that our God, the Lord God of heaven, the creator, he is one. The God of Israel, he is one. The God of the house of Jacob, the God of the church, he is one because there is a problem in the house. And let me tell you, blessed people, we normally tackle these issues, these topics, because sometimes there is confusion, there is misunderstanding, some misconceptions and that's how the enemy enters into the church through these uh, confusions because he comes to deceive the church from receiving the true word of God. And so what the scripture is actually telling us is this, that are you aware, church of Christ? Are you aware, child of God? Are you aware, house of Israel, house of Jacob? Are you aware that the Lord thy God is one? Because it's very important for us to understand this particular scripture because the time which we are living in, the time, the hour and the season which we are living in, there are many false gods in the church. There are many idol, uh, many, many idol worshippers in the church. There is falsehood in the church and it is important for us to realize that the God of Israel, who is the triune God as we are aware, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the three in one God, He is one. There is either you worship God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or you don't worship God. In other words, if you don't worship the Trinity in its perfection and completion, there is no worship of God there. That is what the scripture is telling us. Because remember, blessed people, in the New Testament, the Bible did come out very clearly that our God is a triune God, comprising of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity that works together. They are, each of them are an individual person, but they are one one god so let me tell you blessed people that's why even christ spoke of this in the in the in the new testament when he said that if you you cannot say that you love the father and yet you hate the son you cannot say that you love the son and you hate the father because the son comes with the message from the father he comes with to to, to tell you this he comes to tell you the instructions he comes with the instructions as he has heard them from the father 
So you cannot say that you will listen to the Father and not listen to the Son. That actually means and tells us that something is wrong with that kind of worship. Because remember in these particular verses which we have just covered, these ones here, Scripture is speaking about the most important commandment of loving the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, with your might. He's talking about the service and the worship and the love to your God, submission to your God with your whole humanity, with every breath that you take, with every action. And he begins by saying that even before you love your God, you must understand that he is one. Because let me tell you, blessed people, unless you understand this Jehovah, unless you understand this concept of God being one, you cannot be able to love him and even be able to, 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 to pray to him and have communion with him in his completion, in his perfection. Blessed people, it is very important for you to realize that Jesus Christ, who was born in a manger in Bethlehem and grew up in Nazareth, and is known as the Messiah by the Israelites, even our Messiah, Gentile, the Gentile church, the Gentile generation. We know him as the Messiah. But are you aware that Christ Jesus, loving Jesus, the one who used to raise the dead, multiply food, the same Jesus who would raise up cripples and heal the sick, the dumb, the paralytic, everybody would receive their healing. That same Jesus was the one who strikes Sodom and Gomorrah because of sin. Are you aware? Because it is important for you to realize that even at that time when, Christ, when God was striking Sodom and Gomorrah, when he has this conversation with Abraham, Christ Jesus was also there striking Sodom and Gomorrah because of sin. Because there is this misconception of this loving Jesus, wonderful Jesus, marvelous Jesus, merciful Jesus, who was a once a baby in a manger. There is this uh, confusion that this Jesus cannot be the one who strike, who strike the, 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 the nation of Sodom and Gomorrah or strike the Egyptians. He cannot be the same. Are you trying to tell me that the same Jesus who died for me on the cross is the one who's going to judge me also in case I sin? Is he still going to be the judge? The same loving Jesus, is he going to take sinners to hell? Let me tell you, blessed people, it is important for us to realize that God is a jealous God. Because of this idol worship that is going on on the earth today now, the worship of technology, the worship of modern, uh, mo 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 modern, modern physics, uh, modernism, the worship, the false worship of men of God, in quotes, the false worship of idols in the church, the false worship of people in the church, the false worship of music in the church, it comes a time when the believers must be able to internalize the word of God and read it in depth to come and realize and understand fully that our God is a jealous God and he demands his worship alone. Remember, he does not share glory with anybody. Anybody who tries to claim and to share his glory, as we see right now in the church, he strikes them. Hallelujah. There is judgment actually that awaits them. So it is important for us to realize that even in the church today, you cannot say that in this particular church, you are worshiping the Father alone. You don't know the Son, you don't know the Messiah. And of course, if you don't know the Christ, you cannot receive the Holy Spirit. 